through the years, there have been many music artists that have come and gone and have been in various different controversies such as Demi Lovato and Michael Jackson. However, today I will be telling you about the most evil music artists. Austin James is a former music artist who gained a relatively large following on YouTube, gaining over half a million subscribers. He was active on the site from 2007 to 2017, uploading covers of popular songs. He also released his EP in 2014 titled We All Fall Together, which rose to number 12 on the iTunes charts. The vast majority of Austin's fan base was made up of teenage girls, as he would be described as a teenage heartthrob. In 2015, allegations were made against Austin, claiming that he had been messaging underage girls online, asking them to perform acts for him on video. A petition was made to have Austin removed from the Warp Tour in the same year, which Jones eventually pulled out of himself willingly, uploading a video titled Setting the Record Straight, where he confirmed that allegations against him were true and apologised to his viewers. I've recently come under some fire on social media for mistakes I've made in the past. I used to ask fans for twerking videos. Yes, twerking the dance move. It's not something that I'm proud of, it's not something that I think is right, and I shouldn't have done it. However, in 2017, Jones was arrested for creating CP, which he pleaded guilty to receiving in 2019. This landed him a 10-year prison sentence. Behind bars, 26-year-old singer pleaded guilty to child pornography back in February. Jones, who is from Bloomingdale, was accused of coercing six underage fans to send him sexually explicit videos. Several of those victims delivered impact statements in the Chicago courtroom this afternoon. His YouTube channel was then subsequently deleted, and all of his music was removed from streaming platforms. It's my D, pop it out like lipstick, razor sharp red lashes on my fashion, just touch his most of you who were on YouTube in the late 2000s and early 2010s would have heard of Darby Vanity. He was the lead singer of a popular scene band, Blood on the Dance Floor. He started his internet career on MySpace as being a hairstylist. However, it would be revealed years later that Darby didn't know a thing about styling hair and wore a wig. Darby used his popularity on the platform to make his band in 2006, alongside Christopher Mongilo and Rebecca Fugati, who both left the band after their first album was released. They were replaced by Gareth Ecstasy, whose sister was dating Darby at the time. They became quite popular, going on to release three EPs and one album, then going to tour to promote their next album. <laughs> During one of the shows, during the tour, the police dragged Darby off stage and he was arrested after a report that he had RPD'd a girl who was underage before the concert in the parking lot after attempting this with another 16 year old. I couldn't even process what was happening as fast as it was happening. Uh, you must have just been in shock. I was definitely in shock. Um, looking back on it directly afterwards, I did uh, I did definitely have some signs that I was probably about to pass out, which, I mean, obviously things wouldn't have gotten better from there. Darby was unable to complete the rest of the tour as he was jailed, leading to Garrett to continue the tour on his own. However, Darby was bailed out by his father. It was also reported before this that Darby had sexually assaulted a 13-year-old girl. However, the parents didn't press charges as long as Darby stayed away from her. Garrett left the band in 2009, leading to the formation of the most recognisable lineup in the band, as he was replaced by Javon Monroe. In 2010, Jessica Leonhart, aka Jessie Slaughter, who was 11 at the time, made a post on the website Sticky Drama claiming that Darby had engaged with sexual acts with her. She would get hate from the toxic fans of the band who defended Darby, and then the infamous video of her and her father responding to them would be posted. 
which Darby and Jay re recreated, mocking them. Harry Potter is like fucking guys ruining my life, and I know my shit is falling down. And fucking call me a whore for it. Don't be saying so. Oh, <laughs> his fans that the allegations against him were not true, but he eventually became far more well known as a predator than a music artist. Videos also emerged of Darby being inappropriate to his fans, who were mostly teenagers. Oh my god! Yes! Give me your applause right now! Give it to me! Give me all your applause! I want them all! Give me your applause! Right now! I want the brush. You see this thing? Give them to me right the fuck now. Don't be a prude. Don't be a prude. Give me that hello kitty. Give me that hello kitty. I want it. Here you go. It was also reported that Darby had made sexual advances towards another woman who he worked with on a music track. Jay Von Monroe left the band in 2016. And he also eventually accused Darby of being abusive towards him. After Chris Hansen launched an investigation against Darby in 2020, many more women came out accusing him of sexually assaulting them, bringing the total number of women to 21. All of them said how Darby was cruel, violent and controlling. However, despite this, and even after being investigated by the FBI, Darby is still free he still posts songs onto, onto YouTube under the new name Kawaii Monster and also had an Instagram account which was recently taken down. However, everyone who supported Darby have now grown up and realised how sick and twisted he really is. He is also still reportedly talking to underage girls online. But now, everyone knows that Darby Vanity is a sick monster who deserves to rot in jail. Who you are. Nobody. I'm nobody. This man should need no introduction. Charles Manson was the leader of the Manson family cult and was also surprisingly a music artist and was most definitely the most evil to have ever lived going on to become one of America's most infamous criminals. Ever since he was born, Manson was a criminal, burning his school down at the age of nine and committing petty theft by the age of 13, and spent most of his younger years in reform schools. However, despite not having much of an education, he reportedly had an IQ of 109 by the age of 16, and was also diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder which is equivalent to being a sociopath. After leaving reform school, Manson would go on to commit many more crimes which landed him in jail. This is where he would learn to play the guitar by Alvin Carpis, leader of a bar Carpis gang. Manson would also meet Phil Kaufman, who thought that Manson's songwriting skills could land him a record deal. Manson was eventually released and moved to LA, where he gathered a large following who he told were the reincarnation of the original Christians. And Manson himself was their messiah-like figure. Two girls of the cult eventually met member of the Beach Boys, Dennis Wilson, who Manson told he had an interest in music. This eventually led to Manson recording 100 hours of material in Wilson's brother's studio. However, the songs have never been released to the public. But Manson wrote a song for the Beach Boys, which was reworked into the song, Never Learn to Love. Not long after this, Manson began his descent into madness, eventually leading to several people's deaths by the end of 1969. Manson also went on to believe that there would be a war between black people and white people, 
until the Mansons came to rule over them. The Mansons would then go on to kill many white people, making it seem like they were killed by black people. Eventually, they were all caught and sentenced to life in prison after killing at least nine people. Manson served his sentence until his death in 2017. Manson is now seen as a deranged psychopath. I tried to stop the Vietnam War and I did it. And I was convicted for being the father of this country. And all the things I did, I did without breaking the law. Maybe I haven't done enough. I might be ashamed of that for not doing enough. It's safe to say that Manson was definitely the most worst music artist to have ever lived and won't be remembered for his music but will be remembered for his sick twisted views and ideology.